Okay, school dude Clem here, as some of you think I say. Anyway, I thought it was about time I upgraded to a solid state hard drive. So I've done so and installed Windows 10 on it, which seems to be working just fine. Except there's one small problem. Now, for the longest time, I've always said that it's a really bad idea to rely on an internet connection to play your games or in this case activate Windows because if the servers ever go down you're not going to be able to do that and that's exactly what's happened here so I put my key in and it says it cannot connect to the server however the more eagle-eyed among you may have noticed that I've changed my desktop wallpaper I've enabled dark mode we go into one of the folders let's say go into documents we have dark mode and I've even made the taskbar automatically hide even though this is an unactivated windows just with a few registry tweaks I've managed to get that working I'm not going to show how I did that because there's plenty of tutorials out there already on how to do that and just to prove that this, that this is not activated we'll go into settings and you can see there windows isn't activated and I'll show you what happens if I try to activate it. Well, I don't even need to try to activate it because you can see right here it says we can't activate Windows on this device because it cannot connect to the server. That's really stupid. When I installed Windows XP, it never had to go on the internet in order to activate. And I think the same was for Windows 7. But this? Windows 10 having to go online in order to activate is one of the most retarded things I have ever known in my entire life. That's really stupid. That's really stupid. That's really stupid. 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 <coughs> is really stupid. Like I said, Windows XP never had to do that. And while I would love to move over to Linux and be free of Windows tyranny forever, that's not going to happen just yet because so much of my stuff relies on Windows that Linux currently is just not an option for me. Okay, this is Future Claim here. I finally actually did manage to get it activated and all my software installed. So if we go into settings, you can see that is now gone. So I use the Microsoft Toolkit to activate this and that doesn't require an internet connection. So I can do it completely offline. And now everything is good. Anyway, back to the video. So, I think it's about time I start customizing this. Doing things that you couldn't even do on an activated Windows. So first of all, I'm going to change the startup sound. I don't even know what the current startup sound is because I have that disabled, but let's just have a listen. Hmm. Windows 7 startup sound. Replace the Windows setup, um, startup sound with something much better. The Microsoft sound from Windows 98. Enable startup sound. Uh, reboot. Much better. Got to run window, win arrow tweaker again because there's other things that I want to change. Lots of other things I want to change. Enable the auto logon checkbox. I'm just disabling a few of the annoying quirks here. Like for instance a pop-up description of everything that you put the mouse over. Also I'll disable this thing that puts shortcut on every shortcut I put. Because if I make a whole bunch of shortcuts I have to rename all the files. And nobody wants to have to do that. And you know what else? Classic photo viewer. And there was one other thing I wanted to do. Classic task manager and MS config. Hey Silver, since Sonic and Elisa are apparently the thing, wanna go on a date with me just so I can get back at Sonic? You're asking me out? It's no use! <clears throat> my chest. Okay, I think my silver voice is worse than my Amy's voice. I'm going to show you some of the software I use, all of which is free, apart from the Adobe stuff. 
So I'm going to start with some of the customization software. So I don't really like the Windows 10 taskbar and start menu. Even though this is the LTSC start menu, I still don't like it. So I'm going to install Classic Shell, or Open Shell as it's now called. And this will replace the taskbar with something much more appealing. Okay, yeah, we're getting there. I'm just going to tweak this a little bit until it looks the way I want it. Next thing I want to do is I want to change my fold the appearance of my folders and my taskbar and everything. And that can be done with window blinds. Now, I forgot that this one isn't free, but it's really, really cheap. It's only like a fiver, so uh, it's not exactly like it's expensive. And I'm going to have to extract this into my thing because at the moment it's still compressed. Ah, oh, but this is so much easier to navigate. Right, well, my window blinds is loaded. I'm just going to enter product key, which already seems to have put in. Now, I cannot share this key because this is registered to my email address, so... And activate. Let's hope this server hasn't gone down. That's looking very familiar now. I still got a little bit of customization to do. A ribbon disabler, which is also free. Okay, disable ribbon explorer. Let's log out and back in. And ah yes, that's looking much better. So now it's the time to install free software. Firstly, LibreOffice. Now I used to use OpenOffice, but I've heard this is better, so LibreOffice it is. And I have a document open that I created with Apache OpenOffice, but that's just to make sure this is working. Okay, so next thing I want to set up is Antimicro. Now that may sound like some kind of copy protection thing, but what it actually is, is a great alternative to XPadder. What XPadder did was let you use a gamepad as a keyboard or mouse, which was really useful for when playing games that had very little or no controller support. Xpadder doesn't run on Windows 10, so Antimicro it is. It's free and much better anyway. So here we are, quick demonstration. I've configured the right thumbstick to be mouse control and the left thumbstick to be the arrows. So if I go up and down with this, you can see that is going up and down there as I move the thumbstick. The right thumbstick I have configured as mouse, so when I move that about, you can see, I can now move the mouse without even touching the mouse. And of course you can configure all the other buttons for whatever you want, so keystrokes, mouse clicks, whatever, and look at the state of that. Next up, Audacity, which is a great freeware multi-track audio editor and pretty much my audio editor of choice. And here we are. Here's some Commodore 64 music that I've dissected, basically. And I can solo each channel. Have them all playing, or apply whatever effects I like to do. Format Factory will install that in just a little bit. There's a little thing we need to do before we install that, because it's one of those ones that likes to install tons of other stuff that you don't want, so I'll uh, show you what to do about that. K-Lite Codec Pack. Now this includes the um, Media Player Classic, which I think is just much easier to use and much better than Windows Movie Player. Could also install VLC, but I like this better. This may be an older version of Media Player Classic, but it does everything I want. Now what more could you ask for?
Yeah, most of the videos here are recorded from the screen, but you get the idea. Speaking of recording from the screen, Open Broadcaster Studio. This can record from the screen, it can record from a camera, it can do all kinds of effects, and of course, it is free. It does require a little bit of setting up, but uh... So here you go everybody, now you don't have to use Bandicam or Fraps or anything like that that uses a... a puts a stupid watermark on the screen. Because now, you've got this. It's much better. Now normally here is where I would select... Now normally here is where I would suggest paint.net, but that really wants to keep updating all the time, so another good alternative to that is GIMP. Actually, forget everything I just said about GIMP, it sucks. Paint.net is much better, and of course it's free. I can do things like this, like turn tails blue. I think it looks better like that. Next thing I want to talk about is Open Modplug Tracker. And this is what I do all of my music on. So there's already a demo song loaded, I did not make this, but let's just take a listen. Let's move that on a little. And I'll be setting that up later for all the things I want to do with it. So next, Format Factory. Now this is a media converter, converts between video formats, audio formats, picture formats, and lots of other different file formats that most software would make you pay to convert it. This does it all for free. There's just one little issue with it, and that is the installer likes to install other stuff as well. So, I've disconnected the computer from the internet, so it will only install what I want it to install. This might take a little while. Okay, that just flew by, but um, I paused the camera at the time. And here we have Format Factory, Documents, Pictures, Audio, and Video. And several other different things as well. Utilities, ISO formats, you got the lot. I'm using Format Factory to convert the files for this video. And that's the VMware Workstation Player, so I can run Windows XP inside of Windows 10. Windows XP running inside of Windows 10. And as this is a virtual machine I saved, I also have all my other stuff here as well. And it's nice to be able to play all the old games I used to that I cannot play on Windows 10, I can play them on here. I even run my video editor in this virtual machine because it does not work on Windows 10. And in fact, this is what I'm editing this video on right now as we speak. This is registered to my email address, so... And activate. I hope this server hasn't gone down. Well, that really brings us to the end of this video, so, um, yeah. I guess I'll see you next year.